I'd like to take just a moment to congratulate all of our graduates who are here today and to wish all of you the best of luck with your future endeavors. Last night at the college commencement, I said a few words about what I think that, what I think you embody as humanists and what I hope you'll be doing as you go forth in the world. My job here today is to introduce our keynote speaker, Professor Massimo Ciavolella. Dr. Massimo Ciavolella studied at the universities of Bologna, Rome, and British Columbia where he received his PhD in classical, medieval, and Renaissance studies. He taught for many years at Carleton University in Ottawa and at the University of Toronto before coming to his present positions as Franklin D. Murphy Chair in Italian Renaissance Studies and as Director of the UCLA Center for Medieval and Renaissance Studies. He was co-founder and co-editor from 1970 to 1991 of Quaderni d'Italianistica, the official journal of the Canadian Society for Italian Studies. And he's currently co-editor with Professor Luigi Bellarini of the University of Toronto Press's Lorenzo da Ponte Italian Library, a collection that will include 100 major Italian texts in an English translation. In 2009, he was given the honorific title of Grande Ufficiale della Repubblica Italiana by the President of the Italian Republic. And in 2016, he was awarded the Sigismondo d'Oro by his hometown, Rimini, for the honor he has brought the city through his scholarly and cultural activities. Please join me in welcoming my colleague, Massimo Travolella. Thank you, Dean Skaberg, and uh, good evening, buonasera to all of you. <laughs> Uh, this guy mentioned my hometown, Rimini. It's a small town on the northern Adriatic coast uh, where I grew up, known basically for two reasons. Uh, after Julius Caesar crossed uh, the Rubicon, which is right there, he gave the speech. Uh, you remember Suetonius uh, talks about, uh, talks about uh, uh, the speech that he gave uh, and the famous phrase that we all know, alia iacta est, the dice is cast. Uh, that was done in Rimini. If you go to the main square in Rimini where once was a forum, you have a huge statue of uh, Julius Caesar. And by the way, I did my high school right there in uh, uh, a high school, classical, called Giulio Cesare. Uh, the, other, the other person well known in Rimini is uh, Fellini, Federico Fellini, the director, who did several movies on my hometown. Now, I studied in high school the classics. Ancient Greek, Latin, and university too, particularly Italian, English, and French literature. But while I was studying in high school, my father was plotting my future. He wanted me to become a physician because, and he told me many times, and it is a sentence that I remember perfectly well, so is a quote, someone will always get sick. And so you will always have a secure source of income. It's true, of course. Uh, and since I resisted that path, I wanted to study the humanities, I later discovered that he went to speak to all my closest friends and convinced them to enroll in medicine at the University of Bologna. I felt I had no choice. I followed them and entered the Bologna Medical School. I wasn't a very good student uh, in medicine. I actually wasn't a very good student in high school either. I did well afterwards uh, when, when I moved away from medicine. Uh, and after two years, I knew it was the wrong place for me. I left medicine and went to graduate with a degree in classical and romance languages and a PhD in Renaissance studies. Just three weeks ago, I was staying in Rimini and met many of my old schoolmates. Some have had a long career as physicians. Others opened private businesses or became lawyers or teachers. The ones who had been teachers seemed to be the happiest. Even after retirement, in Italy, by the way, the age of retirement is 70 years. For now, they could pursue their cultural interests full time 
having no need to prepare material or uh, on a daily basis uh, to bring before 25, 30 uh, hungry students, uh, young, hungry, young minds. And those old friends who had been convinced by my father to become physicians, and had become physicians, and they spent their life being physicians, had long decided that though care of the body was rewarding, just as important was the care of their mind. Now, but what are the humanities? The 1965 National Foundation of the Arts and Humanities Act states that the term, quote, includes, but is not limited to the study of language, both modern and classical, linguistics, literature, history, jurisprudence, philosophy, archeology, span comparative religion, ethics, criticism and theory of the arts, those aspects of social sciences which have humanistic content and employ humanistic methods and the study and application of the humanities to the human environment with particular attention to reflecting on diverse heritage, tradition, and history and to the relevance of the humanities to the current condition of, nat of national life. Close the quotation. Yet, there is no doubt that for many people today, the humanities in general and works on early modern studies in particular, and I'm thinking of the Middle Ages, humanism, the Renaissance, are quote unquote useless. As a discipline, the study of the humanities has been marginalized, even removed from some schools' curricula. They've been dismissed as negligible. By the way, I had a problem with this word all day, negligible, you know? Because for some reason, I kept looking at it and thinking that it was Italian, but there is no word like that in Italian, you know? <laughs> so it's kind of weird, but this time came out all right. <laughs> OK. So negligible by governments and by many of those private institutions that would have been able to sustain them financially. The thinking appears to be, why give money to useless fields, that is to say disciplines that do not produce a tangible profit? What good does it do in a period of economic crisis to squander resources on studies that will, bring, that will not bring an immediate return on investment? Well, half a century ago, renowned French philosopher and classicist Pierre Hadot offered us an answer to that question in his book entitled, the English translation of his title, Spiritual Exercises and Ancient Philosophy, within a chapter entitled, Is Philosophy a Luxury? This is the quote. The role of the philosopher is precisely to reveal to mankind the usefulness of the useless. Or, if one prefer, <laughs> teach, or if one prefer, teach a way to distinguish between the two senses of the word useful. We can hold to a those statement and disprove the other limited utilitarian and materially narrow view of the humanities by sharing instead that the act of reading and the study of culture are conveyors of a non-monetary utility, of a fundamental good. The books, films, art, music, theater, or architecture that we encounter throughout our lives are in fact the proof that the good is different from profit. And they are, to quote, to quote Hado once again, an antidote, and he says to the barbarie de l'utile, the barbarism of the useful which has diminished social relations, the way we think and feel, and degraded many institutions of higher learning uh, that are seemingly fast becoming factories uh, to manufacture and sell degrees. We may recall, or you may recall, Mark Twain's response after hearing the false claim that he was at death's door when he quipped, quote, the report of my death was an exaggeration. 
close the quotation. So too, I say that the demise of the humanities is in fact an exaggeration, which is shown here today through you as new graduates uh, and in the celebration of your achievement. I am convinced that our role, yours and mine, to demonstrate that what for, other, for others could be dismissed as useless is instead fundamental to our understanding of the world, to the legacy of our past, and to create connections to one another. It is said that to experience something is to have it become part of you something that remains as critical today as it was for our ancestors. Once Plato, long time ago, the Greek philosopher Plato observed, the soul brings nothing else to the other world but its education and culture. I've been teaching for a long time, over 40 years, and though I will retire at some point. My work in the humanities continues to open up worlds to me, not only in the discovery of new places, ideas, and ways of thinking, but it brings me into contact with exceptional people, as students like you, colleagues, fellow academics, and lifelong friends. You have not only received your degree in the humanities, and be proud of it. You have received it not from a factory, but from one of the finest universities in the world. <clears throat> Congratulations to you all. And from my own experience, many years ago at my son's graduation, I know how joyful and proud your families are feeling. So please let us celebrate what you have accomplished should be celebrated now and in the future. You deserve it by the way you did it. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations.